Welcome everyone. My, na my name is Jan Simon Müller. I'm the uh, oops. I'm the AJL release manager, um, and I'm also uh, taking care of the continuous integration infrastructure. And uh, also, I looked into how we can run AGL on uh, AWS. Um, and here's an update on um, what you can do with these uh, instances and how to get there. So, running, an, uh, running AGL on such an instance um, basically means we need to look into uh, what instances are there, uh, how do we build for those instances, how do we get our local image into the cloud environment, um, how we start up such an instance, and how we get access to it. Okay, so why? Um, we have heard from Jerry that one of the goals is to develop in the cloud and then deploy on the device. Um, so such cloud images will become an essential part of the development workflow, right? To simplify and speed up development, you do not need to have the exact piece of hardware, right, if it already exists on your desk to develop, right? Um, so this is a, a crucial part to simplify the workflows. Um, this can also be used in CI. Basically, you can run all your tests against a cloud image. You can then amplify, scale out, uh, with, with running multiple cloud images in parallel. So you are not limited to the kind of few test boards um, that are available. So this is echoing uh, Jerry's talk. Um, they started basically um, on bare metal cloud hardware, right? With the uh, drawback that those instances do work but as you are blocking a whole uh, uh, hardware instance, it's rather expensive, right? Um, the next step, and basically what I present is kind of an inter intermediate step, um, we do use um, the uh, cloud instance, but with a hypervisor in between, with the Nitro hypervisor from uh, in, in this case, uh, AWS in between. The drawback on, on this side is we do not have the graphics hardware exposed. Over on the left side, we do have it exposed, bare metal, but over here, the hypervisor does not expose graphics. Um, and basically, the parallel development stream, that's what uh, Michaela from Virtual Open Systems develops, is to expose the graphics over VertIO. So that's the bigger picture. Um, I do focus on the case that we um, bring up an AGL image. We do not care right now about pure graphics performance, but we do care about getting the image up. On, uh, on a virtualized, cheaper instance um, with uh, uh, sufficient graphics performance and how we can access it. Okay, so what's the machine that we have available? So we build upon the uh, Meta AWS layer that's uh, hosted uh, or developed by the AWS uh, IoT group. And they expose two machines. They expose an x86 machine, and they expose an ARM64 machine. Those are very standardized machines. They both boot with UEFI in the same way. So very streamlined, very standardized. In, th in theory, 
uh, this is essentially ARM system ready. So in theory, you could already throw that on a system ready machine, right, with probably little tweaks. Um, the upstream uh, repository is here. We embed the matching version into the AGL tree already, um, as, as you will see later. Now, if you build such an image for x86, um, it will basically bring all the, um, uh, all the components that you need. It will bring the UEFI, it will bring the network interface, it will bring the SSH server, and um, the uh, AWS infrastructure will basically uh, put in your SSH key that you configured in the web UI. Um, and then you can select from this image, which, which is x86, then you can select also the x86 instant types down here. Um, similar, the ARM version, you select the, the ARM variant in the AMI, so the, in, the, in the image. The image is hardware specific. Yeah? Um, and then you select the instance type and in this case, it's, it's an ARM Graviton instance. Uh, T4G is the Graviton. Um, the build procedure, as with the other AGL builds as well, we do select um, a machine here, either x86 or ARM64 EC2. Um, the extra flag that I use in here is AGL RDP. Um, this gives us graphical output over RDP, yeah, um, and we can connect to it from the outside. Now we can build one of our images, for example, the uh, the uh, IVI demo flutter image um, and then you build it and then what? So next step is we need to get our local build into the cloud environment and for that the uh, Meta AWS repo has a create EC2 script. So um, prerequisites. So to run these scripts, you need the uh, CLI tool installed and you need to have a set of writes deployed into your accounts, a set of roles. This is all documented in here. So with all of this deployed, uh, you can then run the scripts, uh, the script and it needs four, four options. So one is the S3 bucket, so you need to have an S3 bucket as well. Um, S3 bucket, uh, this is the size of the image, eight gigabyte, then the image uh, you wanna upload, and then the machine. Once this completes, you have A, um, the uploaded S3, three object, uh, but on top you get an automated import of an AMI image that you can then see in your, um, in the web UI. So there you go to launch and instance and there is an option to select um, your own AMIs. Yeah. Um, meanwhile it's, it's yeah, owned by me, yeah. So yeah, there's an option, a selector for your own AMIs and then you see only your images down here and can select them. There you go, locate the uploaded AMI. If you have multiple, you need to uh, look for the, uh, for the hash of the AMI, um, which is the, the cryptic number over here. And then you can locate it. With that, what else do we need to set up? We need to set up two crucial settings. A, you need to select your uh, key pair. Yeah, 
So this is basically your SSH key. You can create a new one over here, um, but th that is one setting you need to select and you need to select a security group. Security group, in short, that's the firewall in front of your VM, right? So this defines what ports are open, SSH for example, right? Um, if you don't have an existing group, you have to as at least allow SSH from anywhere, right? Otherwise, you, you will not get to it. Um, in principle, that is all, right? Select uh, AMI, select machine type, key, and security group. Then you can, can hit launch instance, and then uh, you see that the instance here is launched with your image, and it has a public IP that you can now SSH into. Okay, that would give us SSH access, so console access only to our image. Now, uh, one important thing, if you go through the web UI and uh, go to the connect to instance uh, button, it will tell you to connect with your uh, with your uh, um, private key to root. This is not the case. The Meta AWS um, layer injects an ID called user, not root. So you need to connect to user at your instance. So that's a, uh, um, that's a change you need to be aware of the web UI is not correct in this case. So, problem, graphical access. So now we also want to develop UI components, right? Um, the non-bare metal uh, instances do not expose a DRM device. So the, uh, the compositor, Western AGL compositor, does not start up. Um, we can add um, a remote transport. Um, there are two. Uh, we started with RDP standalone uh, with the latest version of uh, uh, Wayland Western. We also have the option to enable VNC but we'll start with that one for now. Um, so for RDP to, to work, we need a few things in place. So instead of um, the, uh, the normal DRM backend, we have here the RDP backend, and it has a couple of mandatory settings, especially what is mandatory meanwhile is, the, is uh, a TLS setup so um, you need to set up a key and a certificate um, to uh, basically secure the connection. Uh, this is no authentication, it's purely a transport, um, uh, transport um, encryption. Um, in our case, the, the, the sizes, but yeah. The certificate, there is a helper script that you could call. We did pre-configure um, certificates, right? For ease of use, but those are of course then not secure. But for ease of use, there are canned certificates um, enabled if you add this feature. So, more recent changes. Um, for speed, to enhance the speed, we did enable LLVM pipe for x86-64. Um, this speeds up the, uh, the rendering performance. It's still remote, but um, it's better than using the pure software rendering. Um, 
one drawback, and maybe if, if someone has LLVM pipe running on, ARMS, uh, on ARM64, um, we need some help uh, getting that to run. Um, maybe Ishi, Ishi-san, <laughs> we, we can take a look at that. So, um, there is a snapshot, an image of AGL in uh, the US West 2 region in AWS. So if you go to US West 2, which is Oregon, Oregon uh, and you search for this AMI, you can start it up. So this is an x86 image. Uh, if you search for this and start it up in a T3 extra large instance, you can then easily connect to it. You need to SSH into it and forward the RDP port, and then you can use an RDP client on your local machine. So let's take a look if we can Oops. I want to move this and change the size a bit. Okay, so here's an instance of exactly that AMI. Let's see if we can make that work. So I'm starting uh, an RDP client um, 1080. Okay, where's my mouse? Here. Yeah, the scaling is not optimal here on the screen, but this is essentially the RDP instance running in the cloud. Um, the speed is acceptable um, for kind of trying out if the UI comes up, if, a, if kind of your UI change applies. It is not really fast, right? But for a quick test, um, the, uh, the speed is acceptable. Um, the next step is then how to get the GPU acceleration deployed, but that's the topic for, uh, for the VertIO development going on. Okay, thank you for joining. This is the